So I'll have a, one of all these, please. I promised you a little bit of info on tractors because an even more exciting delivery is coming on Friday. Right, before I go back to my amateur welding, grinding and painting to try and get some locks and security and gates fixed around here, I thought I would share with you the exciting news, which is we're getting a tractor. So over the past six months, we have looked at just about every option as far as the tractor goes both old vintage tractors, something from the 80s and 90s that was kind of a good value and would do the job, and more modern compact tractors. And after spending a long time wanting something out of the 60s or 70s, um, I've finally seen sense. Nearly everyone I spoke to, whether they were old time farmers, smallholders, that sort of thing, I mean, everyone is sworn by modern compacts for the sort of thing we need. We could go out and buy a Massey 135 or something like that, and that would be great. And maybe one day we'll buy a project tractor. But for what we need is something that can be really versatile, ideally four wheel drive because of the conditions around here, and also something that we know will be reliable. There's no good something that needs, you know, really real nurturing and a, a wizard each time to start up, especially in the middle of winter. I want something that, whether it's me, Joe, or visitors who are helping out, someone, something that's easy enough to drive, easy enough to start, and nice and safe. Therefore, we started asking around what brands and what sort of thing we should be looking for, and the same name keep, kept on coming up, and that was Solace. So they make a really good value tractor, a range of tractors. Um, they, I've been, I think they're the best selling tractor in the country, they sell that many of them. So essentially, it should be, well suited to what we need. They do a 26 horsepower and a 50 horsepower. Now, having seen the 50, I think it's just a bit too big for what we need. That said, the 26 might be a little bit under, but until we've tried, we just simply won't know. And when we started shopping around for a used or a demo, X demo, which was Black Track, and I found them on Instagram, and they've also got a load of packages that they listed on eBay and on Instagram. So I knew that they were kind of tailored to the sort of thing that we wanted, not too agricultural and not too, um, antique and vintage. We started up a conversation and what they've agreed to do, because we weren't quite sure what we needed, they're gonna loan us a demo tractor on a medium term basis. Uh, we've, we're gonna be, or we have bought all of the implements that we're gonna need initially um, from them as well. So everything's gonna get delivered together. What we're discussing now is the flail mower. That's what we need for the back so we can top all the grass, but this one's an offset, so it means that when we're close to the banks of the brook, we can offset it across. Yeah. Which basically means you're away from the edge, soft banks or in hedging and stuff like that. We had decided on to put the grab on the bucket. So all the trees that have come down recently, that just gives us an extra, well, it's like having a thumb on a hand, I guess. We can grab stuff, hence why it's called a grabber, but it means we can <laughs> safely, name, it? we can safely hold up logs and cut the rounds from that. Finally, in this room, we're gonna get a transport box because for the time being, we haven't got uh, a trailer that's really suitable for towing around the fields. And I think that's, we can chuck anything in there, not like to get in the lake and also pallet times. So you're gonna have pallet forks in the back, so if we have a pallet stuff delivered from the builder's merchants, we can just back it up and this will lift 600 kilo, which is enough, I think, for most of them. It's tires mm -hmm. is the main decision, I guess. Yeah. Um, so these are gonna chew up grass They're gonna leave more of an aggressive imprint. So the only real reason for going for agricultural is if we're actually plowing. Yeah, if you're doing land work, yeah. are you plowing? Um, okay. Road rating and that. Then you have a step down from ag tyres, which are the industrial tyres. Yeah. Which are more of a flotation tyre. Still got the grip, but not quite as a, you know leave a cleated imprint no. and aggressiveness that the ag tyres would. They are probably slightly better in mud. Yeah. Um, but again, they all are two and four wheel drive and have diff lock. So switching over to these. Yeah. So these are a step down from the industrial tyres. Um, sort of like an all-terrain tyre. Yeah, just like an off-roader almost. Yeah, like a 4 before. Still quite a chunky tread. Yeah. Isn't it? So, 
and then that would be turf tyres, that's right? Yes. Yeah. So without being on the farm yourself, what would you suggest? Probably the industrial tyres, as they're sort of, they are the best all round. Yeah. Um, and they're the widest, which gives you the widest footprint, more stability if you were, you know, on hills. And from as far as soil compaction and like rutting and stuff, mm -hmm. they're less likely to yes. do it, aren't they? Yes, because so they're more like a flotation. Yeah. Tire with a width. And then the next question was the transmission, because there's mm -hmm. essentially three models. Yeah, so you've got uh, hydrostatic starting here, which is like automatic in a car. You have two pedals just here. Yeah. Pedal, pedal forwards and a pedal backwards. Okay. The further down you press the pedal, the faster you go. Yeah. So you have two ranges here, high, high and low. And yeah, you just obviously the pedal and the steer. So that's uh, the HST. Yeah. So then shuttle, this, which is you, yeah, you have nine forward and nine reverse gears. Yeah. High, medium, low here. First, second, and third, and forward and backwards on that lever. Okay. With the clutch. So why is that double? So you can see, I mean it's more like older traditionally, so you can split the brakes to brake on each rear wheel. Yeah. Again, you won't be using that, but if you were sort of ploughing and needed to turn uh, sharply on a headland, you can lock this wheel and it spins you around. On the spot, probably. Basically, yeah. yeah. Right, we've, uh, we've taken up half a day of their good time, but we're all sorted. Back on the road now. You're not going to eat your breakfast? Look, you've been sniffing tyres. You've got a black face. On front loader, so it's going to be useful around all of the projects up here by the barns. But also, we need to get started on grass because it's not going to be long before that takes off. And we're not planning to get the livestock up here until we're living on site full time. So it makes sense to get it now because we're going to be putting it to good use. There's loads of stuff to get done out there. And because we haven't got a telehandler or a forklift, we've got all these deliveries arriving. We've decided to get forks for the front. We've got the loader, the bucket. We've got some forks for the front. Now that can only take about three, 250, 300 kilo, but I think that's still quite a bit in reality if it's just moving you know, 20 boards at a time or a stack of insulation, all that sort of stuff. But on top of that, we've got the same for the back. The back on the three point can take somewhere like 700 kilo. So most things that arrive on a pallet or you know, the average size pallet will be liftable on there. So I think between those two, it's certainly a lot cheaper than buying a forklift, even an old gas, knackered old one. And those things are heavy, they're terrible on uneven ground, whereas this should be a good option. It also means that when we're looking at storing stuff, all that stuff I'd hoarded at the last place, we're going to look at getting some shelving in the big stone barn. And we might be able to just constantly keep everything, keep our life on pallets. It's just going to be an easier way of moving stuff around. I'm really beginning to hate double moving, triple moving everything you get it delivered in the wrong place and that's you know two hours because you need to move it all by hand likewise when we moved up from the house we just had to unload the the lorry we hired and the trailer middle of the night we just had to unload it wherever in reality what we should have done is loaded everything onto pallets and then we've got a lot of options in the future anyway hopefully from that little bit of footage you'll get an idea of the sort of size of tractor that's coming and we can't wait to to put it to use and they're really keen black tracker just like don't keep, it's not a show model, don't keep it pretty, just use it and abuse it within reason and put it to the test. Joe's been really helpful. Uh, this is a J-O-E from Blacktrack. He's been helping us uh, pick out everything that we're probably gonna need for here. There are additional things that will be on the shopping list. Uh, post knocker for when we come to see with fencing out there and potentially things like chippers and anything else that will go on the PTO on the back. It's basically a Swiss Army knife on wheels. So we'll put it through its paces and hopefully give you a real world example of what the tractors are like. This is not some sort of sales pitch for uh, Solis, the manufacturer. We're just gonna be uh, using it as we would if it was our own, our own tractor. And in reality, once we've had a good amount of time with it, there'll come a point where after a while we'll, we'll get a feel for what size tractor we actually need. Whether the 26 is enough, whether the 50 would be too much, um, so over the course of you know the next few months, hopefully we'll get a feel because at some point we'll be investing in buying one. So hopefully it's a good result all round. We'll be able to create loads of content around it, both just for the interest of people who might be looking for one, 
but also just fun, having fun on toys and tools. Plus, we've got the dumper up and running. And in the future, we'll share the little cart as well. I'm gonna wait until we've got the tractor, and then I'll show you the little wooden cart with the girls, because again, that was another little purchase when we moved here.